I'm your host, Will, in the most local 23. You're joining me for Desire and Decorum, Book 1, Chapter 7, Opera St. James. Still waking up, you look at the formal invitation that Briar hands you. Miss Parsons is clutching an identical one of her own. Oh. Oh, this is the... <clears throat> Lady Bella of Edgewater, Duke Richards of Carlton, entreats the honor of your presence at Opera St. James on Saturday next at half after eight. The favor of a reply is requested. So that's what text messaging looks like in 1800s. Opera St. James, that is where my mother sang. Oh, she would have been thrilled to know you're going there. Opera St. James, home to great mother, great Mary Hartford. Your mother was an opera singer? Before I was born. How could you not tell me what a fantastic life she must have led? You simply must tell me more about her, Lady Bella. Only if you call me Bella. We're friends now, are we not? We don't need titles. Miss Parsons clasps your hands in hers. And call me Annabella. Oh, Annabelle. Now, Bella, what in the world are we going to wear to, to be seen at the opera? You and Miss Parsons walk down the busy street. She loops her arm through yours as you pass the various shops. My sisters are thrilled to finally play the matchmaker that I, I fear they shall actually rent out a storefront to display me. I'm sorry if I'm not sounding the best in the world today. <clears throat> kind of sick. Been up all night, so. Is that why you weren't at Mr. Sinclair's dinner? Miss Parsons rolls her eyes. I know. I would have much rather have been there with you. Believe me. Tell me all about it. Who did he sit with you with? Was there dancing? She gives you a side long smile under low under lowered blashes. Did you miss me? Every moment. At the party Duke Richard showed up uninvited. Miss Holloway seemed to find me threatening. Mr. Sinclair spoke up for me. Uh, Duke Richard showed up uninvited. No! Yes, and he seemed to go out of his way to bait Mr. Sinclair. What's going on between them? No one talks about it, so I'm certain it's something terribly scandalous. But... What were you doing that you couldn't attend? Miss Parsons gives an exaggerated sigh as you reach the tailor shop. The air inside is dry and fragrant with the smell of waxes and dyes. My sister's husband sent a friend of his to ask me for a drive in the park, and they simply wouldn't hear of anything but that I accept. And? Was he nice? Oh, Bella, he was such a bore. He talked nothing but the trade and the weather. I can't think of which he, one he made sound worse. I'm sorry. It really was quite beastly, and the worst part is he spoke of making an offer for me, as if all one needs is for one's in marriage is for one's fortune to be compatible. You should not sell for anyone you cannot care for. Seek romance for someone already is dear to you. Hmm. I'd seek a na nasal anti-decongestant is what I'd seek right now. Anyone got one? <coughs> Excuse me. Seek romance with someone already. Miss Parsons gives you a searching look. You stroke a lock of hair away from her eyes, and her hands trap yours, holding it warm against you. Why should either of us settle for a man who bores us? 
You, you cannot mean what I think, Bella. Can I not? Your eyes meet Miss Parsons, takes a shaky breath and steps back. I think we had to best look at the dresses. She turns her attention to the shop's wares, moving aside. Bolts of cloth to search through the finished samples. Oh, what looks so lovely in this one? She holds up a beautiful blue silk dress decorated with a heavy bronze brocade. I swear, half of the people at the opera spend their time watching the boxes, not the performers. This will definitely draw the lie. Oh. Bella, you must try it on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, isn't this exactly like the other gown? Correct me if I'm wrong, but the color scheme is the same. Or am I thinking of some other different book? Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but... Yeah. Oh! That's right! It looks just like this one. <laughs> okay, choose this look. Feeling like I'm becoming multiplier or markiplier in this evil side. It is beautiful, but too fine for me. I have other dresses I could wear. You are beautiful in everything, Bella. You look at the blue silk one one more time, then turn her way. I am more interested in watching the show than being watched myself. You pull your regular clothes back on, regretfully, and Miss Parsons heads for the door. You emerge from the tailor shop under the bright light of the street, blinking. You hear someone calling your name. Lady Bill, what a surprise. You see Prince Hamid across the street, walking with Duke Richards. Ah, my lady, I had not dared hope to have the pleasure today. Ugh. So this is like... The good and the really horrible. Alright. You and Miss Parsons both curtsy to the Duke. Your Grace. Prince Mead takes your hand and brushes a quick kiss across the knuckles. Why, Prince Mead? What a surprise. I thought you only cared to see me when I was lost and in need of rescuing. Perhaps today it is I who must be rescued. Oh, and from what? From spending any more time talking to old men in Parliament. Ah, so instead you'll flirt with every beautiful girl you see. Prince Meat laughs. I should not offend my dear friend Duke Richards without his vote for my treaty tomorrow. I will have to return to Constantinople in disgrace. But... Mm. Mm. We shall be perfectly proper. I shall say nothing of the perfect rose blooming in your tree cheeks, or the way the sun lights your glorious hair. And I shall pretend you mean only to compliment me, and not charm me out of any good judgment. Does your cousin the Sultan know you would risk an international incident over a pretty smile? Prince Amid grins at the Duke. Ah, but what a smile. I heard your reputation, Your Highness, but I must say it hardly does you justice. I'm afraid you have me at a disadvantage, Lizzie. Parsons, Miss Parsons. As Prince Mead bows to Miss Parsons, the Duke steps between you and him, commanding your attention. I received your maid's notes accepting my invitation to the opera. I am thrilled you'll be joining me. What show will we be seeing? It will be opening night for the new show of Handel's Almira. That sounds lovely. I'm not sure what it's about. I can't wait to see who is there. Elmira has some of my favorite arias. Eh, some of my favorite arias. I 
didn't realize you were such a connoisseur. My mother sang me many pieces from Handel's works, but I have never seen them performed on stage. And thank you for including me as well, Your Grace. I am quite excited to attend. Oh, are you all to be at Elmira? How oh, delightful. I would never miss the opening. Shall I send my carriage round to pick you up and we can go together? I hardly think that's necessary. Of course it's not necessary. Were it necessary, it would be a far less extravagant a gesture, no? And we can't have that. It might be your treaty would be less, uh, would be approved faster if you spent less time thinking up extravagant gestures. Uh, but why would I wish to leave your beautiful land any sooner? Prince Mead turns a smile on you. It is settled, then. You would not break my heart by keeping me from showing off to you. As the four of you round the corner, the Duke takes your hand in both of his, pulling you to a stop. Unlike certain Ottoman envoys, I actually have further business in Parliament this afternoon, so I shall take my leave. Ah, oh, good day, Your Grace. Ah, oh, we'll miss your company and your riveting commentary. Duke Richard strides off towards Parliament, building Justice Miss Parsons glances across the street. The Opera St. James, that's it, right there. You look over the white stone building, no different than dozens of others you've passed on your way. I wonder if they'd let us in. They will, when you tell them you're the daughter of the great singer, Mary Hartford. Your mother was a singer? Then we must go in. He takes your arm to cross the street, where the great double doors of the opera house are barred shut. I have spent much time at Opera St. James. I know many of the actors. I'm sure they will let us inside. Wonderful. Probably for diamonds, though. We have nothing like this in Constantinople. No theater where real men and women take on new roles and act them out. Operas or plays? Not even in your own language? The closet we have is a kind of a shadow puppet show. The operators put the puppets behind a curtain so you see only, how do you say, silhouettes? Prince Mead looks away, a slight blush on his olive skin. I am ashamed to say that much of it is uh, crude humor, though. It's quite unsuitable for gentle ladies. Crude humor. I wouldn't mind watching that with you. Bella! What? I imagine it could be quite informative. Prince Mead meets your eyes with a mischievous smile. Perhaps I shall take you to Constantinople one day, and we can watch together. At the Opera House doors, Prince Mead pulls the heavy velvet rope for the bell. He gives a friendly nod to the man who answers. Albert, my friend, we have come early. Would it be a huge imposition for us to come inside? The Prince quickly explains who you are with a nod and a smile. The doorman throws open the huge Opera House doors. Inside, the opera house is dark and cool compared to the bright streets. So this is where your father first saw your mother, on that stage. It's so strange to see it. I wish I had asked her more questions. How did she become a singer? She had always told me that the performers were her family. She never talked a lot about her past, but sometimes I could get her to tell me her secrets, her stories. I loved hearing how she was seen and admired, played different roles, lost herself in the music. She said she was sometimes nervous in front of big crowds, but as soon as she started singing, the music took over and she didn't even see them. I've seen that happen when you sing. You sing? You must sing for me sometime. I would love to. 
You wander down the aisle to the stage, looking at the polished oak boards that reflect the candlelight. If it is not presumptuous to ask, how did the Earl of Edgewater come to meet an opera singer? My mother never told me much. I, I wish I knew more. It's me gently takes your hand, but drops it at the rear curtains on the stage part to reveal a plump woman in an old-fashioned costume. Oh, crap. <laughs> so, we haven't seen this woman since uh, Crown of the Flame. Your Highness, we told you no more special showings until opening day. Prince Maid kisses the older woman's hand gallantly. Madame LeMay, you are as lovely as ever. And you're as big as a liar. But I am not here for myself today. This is Miss Parsons and Lady Bella of Edgewater. We're still having dress rehearsals, ladies. I'm not certain we can... Oh, we're sorry to intrude. I only wanted to see where my mother used to perform. Your mother? I've worked here for 25 years. Who? Madame LeMay looks you over carefully. Her eyes light up in recognition. You're Mary Hartford's daughter. I'd stake my career on it. Oh, I knew we came here. We should have come here. You knew my mother? Of course. Everyone knew Mary. She was going to be our biggest star before she, uh, got in a family way. I... She would have kept singing after I was born. I'm glad I grew up with her at home. Hmm. Wish she would have kept us singing. It would have been marvelous to grow up in a place like this, surrounded by song. I told a nobleman don't marry singers, but she was determined that a young man loved her beyond all reason. Ah, uh, that does happen sometimes. Glance at Prince Hamid and return a smile before returning your attention back to Madame LeMay. Did you ever meet him, my father? Oh, many times. Lovely. He came every night to watch Mary. Seemed like a nice lad. Never had eyes for anyone but her. Can you tell me more about my mother singing? How my parents met? How my mother was like when she was young? How about the other man? How about that? Madame LeMay walks over to a spa just to the right of the stage. It was after one of her performances as Cleopatra. We came out for a final bow, and there was a young gentleman standing right there in front of the stage, like he'd pushed his way forward. My father. Of course. He couldn't take his eyes off her. Just stood plodding like his heart would burst. It sounds perfectly wonderful. Oh, she was swept away in the romance of it, that's for sure. Madame LeMay smooths down the apron of her costume. None of us could believe it when Mary ran off with your father. Just disappeared one night. I, I got one letter months later saying she has a, was with child and couldn't come back to us. She did not wish to raise her daughter here? The director would never have stood for it. I used to be jealous of Mary, actually. She'd been singing since she was just a little girl, and I felt like I could never catch up. Well, now you caught up, huh? And how did she get started so young? The way I heard it, she was singing for coins in India when a ship captain heard her voice and couldn't believe it. He knew she could do great if she had some training, so he convinced her family to send her back to London with him. Gave her over to the company, and they trained her to be one of the best sopranos opera St. James had ever had. Did she ever miss her family? She loved it there, but I know she thought... But I know she thought about them 
I think that's why she was excited for a baby, even if it ruined her good name and reputation. How did it ru- Stupid goddamn bullshit. How did it ruin her good name? My gong sounds backstage, and Madame May suddenly looks flustered. And that's my whole break, lovely. We're about to start rehearsal now, and it was so good to meet you. She gathers the skirts of her costume and starts for the stage door, but Prince Hamid takes her hand, slowing her. Let me guess, it's going to be, would you like to spend time with Prince Hamid for 30 diamonds while they get to rehearse? Uh, perhaps my good friends and I can stay to watch. I can't, unfortunately. My sisters are having some gentlemen over for tea, and they expect me to show off. I'm late already. Miss Parsons kisses your cheek and leaves while Madame LeMay gives you a big smile. Predictability. Well, you should definitely stay and watch, my lady. You're practically family. Mary's little girl. Come back to see us. It would be rather magical to go backstage and see it all the way my mother used to see. Ah, you may find uh, you have a bit of actress in you. I used to dream of getting the chance to be on stage. Prince Hamid holds out a hand to you, inviting you to walk through the stage doors. A private showing, just the two of us. We can hardly turn down an invitation like that, can we? Oh, look! Go backstage with Prince Hamid for a chance! <laughs> so spend time with alone with him, and get a taste of what it's like to be an actress. Dear knows. You wait till I get some nasal decongestion. I'm shoving it up your ass. <clears throat> Explore the backstage with Mr. Mead. Return to your home dumb. I think I'd rather see the show on opening night. Of course. I will not want to take away the magic of your first time. Places! Oh, I must get on stage. I'm in the opening number. Together, you and Prince Hamid walk through the door and emerge blinking into the bright sunlight. Ah, <sighs> sometime later. You arrive home to find Mr. Harper waiting on the front step. Mr. Harper, what are you doing here? This came today from your father. Is something wrong? Not as far as I know, but it was addressed to you. I wanted to make sure you saw it before Mr. Marlcaster. I understand. Thank you for intercepting him. I'm certain Mr. Marlcaster would spy on my private letters if he could. I won't allow him that. He gives a slight bow, and his fingers brush yours as he hands the letter over. Dearest Bella, I'm sorry to write, but your inherent status is not finalized. The Countess has engaged the services of a barista to challenge my will. I pray you quickly find a husband of sufficient status to ensure her challenge is unsubstantiated. No sign, no sincerely your father, love your father, nothing. The Countess is challenging his will. He needs me to make a match more quickly. Aye, and she will do all she can to prevent that. You continue reading. Oh, oh, oh. Your happiness is important to me. I hope you can find a man who warms your heart as well as protects your interests. At the garden party, you spend some time with Mr. Sinclair. If he is of interest, I heard you to ask whether you can reach an understanding, or if there are others you favor in London. Pray tell me of them. Well, there's a pointed question. What does your father say? He asks about Sir Mr. Sinclair. Huh. Okay. Like I said, I hate my nose. Um, I gotta know anything with that man. I'm sure I can win his favor. I have no interest in Mr. Sinclair. Isn't the first one the same as third? Like, 
it, it's kind of more decisive, number three? I have no interest. I have none. Zero zilch. Or, number two is I can witness what favor. Number one is more, I don't know how he feels. <sighs> we'll go with it. It's more neutral. I'm just worried we're going to blow him off and I don't want to ostracize him. How maddening is it to try and reach an understanding with a man who won't answer questions? He is a man of few words, uh, uh, Mr. Sinclair, but I think he would be kind to you. Mr. Harper, I, I do not wish to wound you by discussing this. Your father has been good to me, my lady, but I have no illusions to what he would think of my suitability. Did the Earl have anything else to say? Like other kind of pushing this guy's a love interest. Like, I wouldn't mind it, but at the same time, we've had no connection with him at so all, except for one diamond choice. Or consider whether you might win the favor of Duke Richards. His power will surely let him protect both you and Edgewater. Write me quickly and say what progress you have made. It is imperative we get your claim settled soon. Yours affectionately, Father. Ah, there it is. His eye in hand, Mr. Harper, the letter. The Duke again. Mmm. It would be a powerful husband, no, no lies, but... Mmm. That guy's about as loyal as... Well, YouTube and all their copyright strikes. <sighs> if my father wants me to be happy... Why does he keep talking about the Duke? He is a powerful man. Many women would consider that enough. Not me. Mr. Harper's eyes meet yours. Don't marry him. Whatever your father tells you, he... Uh, I'm sorry, I overstep. No. You must do what is right for Edgewater. Mr. Harper folds a letter and... You look around, realizing you're still standing on the sidewalk. I must find pen and paper. I should like to write back to my father immediately. Dear father, why must it be a man? Question mark. Oh, 200 years too early. Actually, 300 years too early if you really think about it. Inside, Mr. Harper starts to search for paper. I know, someone in the comment section below is going to try and do mathematical equations with me, and they're wrong, because we still it won't accept girl-on-girl girl or guy-on-guy. Guy. still kind of a finicky thing in the world. I'll look for paper and ink in the study. But as he turns to go, you both freeze as you hear familiar voices coming from outside. Simply famished. Almost tea time. If they see me here, I'll be obligated to take tea with them. Would you prefer we take tea outside? We? Oui. If you don't mind a poor groom's company. Mr. Harper picks up a black fiddle case you didn't notice near the door as a diamond choice. Finally, we're going to push this on you once again. <laughs> I could play you some music while you eat. Help you relax a little. If you go outside, you can spend time with Mr. Harper and learn more about his past. Act now and receive a fiddling. Oh, that was perfect, actually. Stay inside. It's probably best if I take tea with Mr. Mulcaster and Miss Sutton. I cannot win them to my side if I continually avoid them. As you say. But I should like to reply to my father first, away from prying eyes. You follow Mr. Harper into the dining room where he lays out paper and ink. What are you going to tell the Earl about your suitors? You finger the broken seal on your father's letter, considering... I will tell him... I will find a husband of high rank. I haven't decided yet. I can only hold Edgewater with you at my side. Oh, wow. That's indecisive as shit. Um, I will only hold it with you, Mr. Harper. Even though we don't know one another and you are merely a, a stable boy of essence. But take me now, Mr. Harper. 
Okay. Um. I haven't decided yet. I'll just say it's too soon. I've hardly ever met anyone yet, and I'm nowhere near ready to pick a husband. Besides, no one's asking me. You give Mr. Harper a sly half-smile from under lowered lids. Lady Bella. Mr. Harper. Were you only still Bella Hartford? Yes. But you're not. You are a lady of Edgewater, and you will have to choose a husband worthy of the title. Suddenly hear a gasp of surprise, and both whip around to see Miss Sutton standing in the doorway listening to everything. Ah! Oh, you are flirting with the stable boy! Miss Sutton. How long have you been there? Uh, not very long. I, uh... Lady Bella is writing to the Earl in private. The Sutton sees the fury on Mr. Harper's face and flees past you into the drawing room where Mr. Marlcaster is sitting. How much do you think she heard? I don't know. Does it matter? Mr. Harper grimly hands you your pen and paper. Whatever you wish to tell your father, do it quickly. Because you can bet that anything Miss Sutton heard will be in Count Henrietta's hands by dawn. And whatever it was, the Countess will find a way to use it against me. Next time on Desire and Decorum. Will Miss Sutton's gossip reach the Countess in time to ruin your day at the opera? Or will you steal the show? Okay. So, with that being said, once again, I do apologize about being crappy today. Pretty much last night, I was up all night being very sick. My stomach just did not agree with me. And then, today, I'm having sinus issues. Stomach's died down, sinus is here. If this was House MD, they'd be like, you have lupus. <laughs> also, little, little note, I've been copyright striked again. By some place that doesn't even really exist and has not done chapters whatsoever, and most likely is going to try and copyright some of the free music that is available on YouTube, no less. Yeah, the idiots are coming out of the woodwork because once you reach a certain level of YouTube, YouTubery, we'll go with YouTubery. They start coming out of the fucking woodwork. Yes, I said it. Um, I'm just so tired of people's shit. But I digress. Like I said, sinus problem. I should have went this morning. I just knew. I just knew. I just had this inkling. You're going to have sinus problems later. And I should have went and got Sudafed, which, by the way, is one of the best decongestants that I ever use. And um, and it keeps you free. So today, I know I didn't sound, you know, 110%, but I try and get this shit out to you as quickly as possible. If it wasn't for that, and you guys would be, like, fine with it, I'd be like, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. Or whenever this gets better, but I digress. Uh, without further ado, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down description below, links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. Remember, we do live streams of choices every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, as well as many other live streams. Do keep in mind this Thursday at around... Eh, providing they have a midnight release or earlier, we'll be streaming Spider-Man for PlayStation 4. Fantastic game, by the way. It's already getting rave reviews. It's... I mean, I've been a huge Spider-Man fan since I was a little kid, so you guys definitely want to tune in with that. Um, so without further ado, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.